Hi, and welcome to the Coastmaster Training Seminar. In this part, we're going to be looking at the Hummingbird Apex and looking at the Coastmaster chart on the screen. And we'll go through some of the menus, features, and um, just the way to navigate and get the most out of these cards. At the moment, we're just off the coast of Coffs Harbour. Um, we'll look at the top of the screen first, uh, and you can see the colour palette options at the top there. So if we push on that, it gives us all the different options. At the moment, we've got number one selected. I really like number one because it gives you different colours, so it better differentiates the different depths, especially when you're looking over reef areas and things like that. It really does make those areas stand out. <clears throat> but obviously, some of the other ones is like tones of blue. That one's going from a darker blue is shallower to a lighter blue is deeper or the opposite. Lighter blue is shallower, darker blue is deeper. But I really like how palette one makes the map stand out and those colors. Now beside that, there's a little fish symbol and a sort of a map icon underneath it. So if I click on that, that takes you into the three modes. Um, so we have three different presets we can choose um, as to how exactly we want to look at our map. So the first one there is called fishing, the second one's called navigation, and the third one's called user. Now, whilst they have defaults associated with those, you can customise all three of those to suit whatever you want. So you could customise it so the navigation one is actually full of fishing information and vice versa. But what it does is give you three titles for then to for you to be able to customise uh, what you want out of those three. So fishing as a factory default will have a lot more um, contour information and less navigation navigation information. And as the name suggests, navigation will be more navigation rich and less contour. Um, and fishing sort of related data. And the third one, user, you can really customise that to suit your needs. Um, this is being a premium map in there. It's got shaded relief and aerial imagery in there. If you're just running a standard map, then that user mode could be a combination of um, heavy fishing contour data and navigation data. It can be whatever you want. So you can really change that. One of the other great things about these three modes is in the menu um, or on your page, if you go to a split screen navigation, you can have um, fishing mode on one side of your screen and navigation mode on your other side of your screen, and you can independently zoom those in, in and out as you see fit. So that becomes a really useful tool as well. So we'll go back to fishing mode for now. And we'll jump into the menu. So if we go down to chart options, um, there's a few things that we can do with in, in these three modes. At the moment, we're in fishing mode. Um, one of the things we can do is go into chart options. Um, and under this fishing mode, we can look at what navigation information we want in this fishing mode. At the moment, I've turned that completely off because when I'm in that fishing mode, I really want the screen to be full of contour information, information relating to me getting onto good fishing spots. But as you can see, what you can do is go in and really customise that to suit your need. You can either turn those, all those functions off or you can custom turn certain ones on and off as you see fit. Like I said, I prefer to turn that completely off. And then we can go into water and I've selected some of that. So I've selected to keep wrecks turned on, rocks, um, obstructions, natural features I've turned off, fishing objects I've left on, nature of seabed. I've turned that off for now. If we turn that on, that'll in text show us rocky areas, sandy areas, etc. So I prefer just to have that off, but you can turn that on if you like. And then land-based information. So 
Um, again, I've turned that all off in this particular mode, but you can have ports, shoreline objects, roads, points of interest, labels, and natural features. So in this, I've decided to turn that off. Then if we went to navigation, you can do the same in navigation. So when you go to your navigation page, you're going to want different settings. So obviously we want maximum navigation data in that particular page, um, but we might want some of the other, less of some of the other data. I've got most of them turned off, nature of seabed I've turned off, but I do have most of it turned on. But in certain areas and in certain locations, it'll be very heavy on certain data. So this is the place where you can go in, find the data that you, you're finding um, you don't want on your screen and you can just untick it or you can untick that whole category um, being navigation, land or water. And obviously you can do the same again for user mode. We'll go back to fishing mode for now because that's the screen we're on at the moment. One of the other things you can do is in depth contours, um, we've got a lot of options here too. We can turn our colour lines on or off. Um, we can make our density high, medium or low. So you can see I've just reduced the density, but because I'm in fishing mode, I want high density contours. So we bring that back up to high. We can change the colour of that. There's three options for the colour of the actual contour line. So if you want a softer looking contour line, you can change it to grey. Um, or if you wanted to, you could change it to blue. And then you've got depth palette. So this is where the palette at the top, and we've chosen that palette that goes from red, shallow water, oranges, yellows, greens, light blues into dark blues. This is where we can change the depth range that you want that palette to be effective in. At the moment, you can see the minimum range is zero and the maximum range is 50. So any of your coastal fishing or lake fishing, typically you'd have the minimum pallet range at zero and you'd set your ma maximum pallet range to the depth you're going to fish on that given day. If we look at the map in the background, it's probably this reef area here is probably down to about 30 metres off the side of those reefs. So all I'll do is go into the pallet max range and change that to 30 and save it. And what you'll see on the screen is it'll actually do a lot better job of highlighting those reef areas. And I'll jump out of here now and just show you what I mean. So as we zoom in, you can see it's making really good use of those pallet ranges. It's shallow reef over here. And we can adjust that at any time. Typically, if you're out fishing for a, a, a day, you're going to work a similar depth. But if you do go from a shallower area to a deeper area and you want to make the most of your, your mapping, um, it's just a matter of going into chart options, depth contours, and just resetting that max depth range. One of the other things we can do if we've identified a, the, the fish are holding, the targeted fish are holding in a certain depth, is we can set uh, depth highlights. And we can set up to four different depth highlights. And we can also set by default a shallow water highlight. And that'll show in red for any areas that you want to be instantly recognisable as shallow water, more probably from a safety navigation point of view. The depth highlights are really more for a fishing tool. So if we have a look at this area here, and we just zoom in a bit, those pinnacles are probably 10 metres or so. So if we go into the menu, chart options, depth highlights at the top, 
we turn that on and we turn depth highlight one on and we probably want that 12 maximum and the minimum let's do it at 10. Well, we could probably drop that to 11. So you can actually see some of those pinnacles are even shallower. So we could go eight. So what it's done in this case is just highlight those pinnacles. So in this area, and we can have a look at some of the other reefs. Obviously, as you're going towards the bank, it's going to highlight those areas. But if you find that a fish are holding in certain depths, it's a really good tool to be able to highlight those pinnacles and those certain depths. So you can see across this reef, um, if you're trolling for kingies or whatever you're doing, you can easily go from one spot to the next um, without any guesswork. So you know exactly what the peaks are across these reefs. Another really good example there, showing where the peaks are across these reefs. Now, the other thing we can do, you can see here, there's actually some shallower ground. So we could set up a second highlight to be even shallower, or we can set up one to be slightly deeper. So if we look at this one, for instance, depth highlight, go down, scroll down, highlight two, turn that on, and we might go ten to eleven. We can choose whatever color we like. Let's choose green, lime green. So there you can see the next depth range down. So if we skip across the, the shallowest, then we can work our way over to the next depth down. In some cases, there'll be a few more isolated pinnacles that are, are that next depth down those ones through here so then it enables you to work those once you've worked the shallowest ones you could work the next ones down same goes for inland um it'd be different scenarios it might be in a lake situation that the fish are holding due to thermocline or um, certain temperature that they want to hold in the fish could be holding in 15 feet so you just go in and depth highlight 14 and a half feet to 15 and a half feet or meters and that's going to light up that depth through the whole lake so then you can just run across the lake and um and hit those target areas without wasting time From an offshore point of view, if we go out towards the shelf, um, this is when we could change our depth highlight. If we we're fishing um, deep water for the day, we might choose 200 metres to 600, so say 300 metres to 600 metres as our, as our colours, depth colours. So we'll go 300, same, let's go 500, now we could have gone even deeper, let's make it deeper.
Okay, so again, you can see by just adjusting that those colours, it shows it up really well. So if you're electric reel fishing, deep water fishing, um, and you're finding you want to fish in a certain depth range, you can set that as well. The other thing we can activate here is our depth highlights. So we can say we want to fish between 350 metres and 400. That's instantly highlighted that. So then you can look in that depth, you can look for the most likely areas. Nice little peak there. So these cards are real users cards, so you can use it as a simple traditional navigation card, or you can really use it as another fishing tool or fishing weapon for you. Um, it's really up to you. Again, you can have them preset too. So there's no need to go in and heavily change menus. If you finish fishing and you want to navigate back, you just simply push the navigation and that takes you back to a traditional navigation type screen that then's not heavily loaded on um, contours and all that. It's got all the navigation information there for you. Go to user. And in the case of the premium cards, um, you then have shaded relief. As an option. And this is a really good way of looking at pretty much the same data um, as our contours. Um, one of the downsides I find with Shader Relief is you can't adjust the colours to suit your depth. So it's really set and forget with Shader Relief. Um, so if we look at this area, for instance, you can see that's in Shader Relief. And that's what it's like in our fishing mode when I fix our depth. Take that back to zero. Run that 30. We still got obviously our um, shallow water highlight turned on. But you can easily play between both, or you can split screen and have shader relief on one side and contours on the other. So, this level of contour, contour detail is exactly the same between our standard card and our premium card. It's only the aerial imagery and shader relief that you get um, as a, in addition on the premium card. So you can see the aerial imagery. In certain areas, it's there's not much benefit to it. Um, in other areas it is. Sometimes from a coastal point of view, it might help just to cross-reference to a land base. But when I think it's very um, useful is in areas where we don't have a lot of contour information. That's pretty good in there. Um, Okay, and in this case, what we would do is go to full aerial mode. So if we go chart options, layers, shader relief, untick that. Aerial imagery is ticked. We want to change that to land and water.
and then it's very effectively highlighting racks, oyster racks, sand bars, and all that sort of thing. So this is where just the ability to choose different options. And we can quite quickly go back to fishing mode. We've still got good contour information in there. Um, so it just depends at the time, what's the more useful information. You can see the weed beds through there, all a little shallow. So if you're fishing flats and weed edges and things like that, then obviously that aerial imagery is going to be uh, very useful for you. Okay, we'll have a quick look inland. Might turn those highlights off. Lake Sinclair. Our depth colour looks to be pretty good actually. So you can see the detail we have. Um, and again, if you're finding fish in a certain area, you can simply activate the depth highlight and that'll make that stand out. So let's pick. Um, 11 meters, for instance. Chart options, depth highlights. Turn that on. Uh, we'll turn highlight two off. Now, let's go 10 to 11. So you can see how it very quickly enables you to see. You can see little little spot there that's right on that depth. So that just might be a spot worth checking out if you've found fish in a certain depth. Another little spot there, a large sort of area, and another little one just off it. So it very quickly um, highlights areas, and you can just have a quick look across your map and choose a few areas to go and target. So they're the main features as you go through the menu. Um, a lot of it's in here. Restore preset. So if you've gone into a certain mode, we're in fishing mode at the, at the moment. If you've gone in and sort of messed it up and you just want to start from scratch, you just hit restore preset and that'll take it back to its factory settings. Um, so you can sort of start to customize again from there. You can have a look at this one on um, shader relief while we're here. I really do prefer the contours, I must say. Um, the contour detail we've got is amazing, uh, but some people do prefer shader relief, which is also fine. Which isn't odd. You got to change that in the menu. Uh, layers. Turn aerial imagery to just land. And then we can turn shader relief on. So I've turned shader relief on in this particular user mode and I've turned the contours off so that when I'm looking at shader relief, I'm not looking at contours as well. So it can just give a different perspective, but I can turn the contours on if I wanted to over shader relief. Depth contours, contour lines on. 
So now you've got a combination of shade of relief and contours. Um, then that's going to give a very similar appearance to our um, color palette selection. But like I said, shade of relief, you can't uh, change and adjust your contour colors. It's just set and forget. So that concludes our training seminar and I look forward to getting your feedback on the new Humminbird Coastmaster mapping cards. Thank you.